ones. So this is the inner beauty section of uh, the same series of videos. Okay, so you have to rely on your inner beauty and your smarts. So I'm like, okay, I'm smart. And, you know, I've always thought of myself as, you know, okay and attractive. I never thought I was ugly, but I never thought I was so gorgeous. But a lot of people say that I am. I'm like, okay, that's fine. I want this to match that. And they say, oh, it does. So I still want to refine it. I'm not perfect and I want to meet the level of what Christ displays. Now let me talk about this too. I've heard a lot of things in the media. Now I've also said these things too, you know, Christ, he is slow to anger, but he has gotten angry and he hasn't sinned. Look at it this way. He turned the tables quite aggressively. He was ticked off. A lot of pastors and a lot of Christians are like, no, you can't do that. I know that because they've tried to do it to me. You know, I'm like, well, what Bible are you reading? Jesus sets the example. We're allowed to get angry, but not sin. He didn't sin in his anger. He expressed his anger. Nobody got physically hurt. Nobody got hurt at all on any level. But he said, you are turning my father's house into a den of thieves. And it was even stronger if you look in the translation. Is that Arama Aramaic or Greek? I forget. I think it's Aramaic, guys. The language is quite strong. It's very close to swearing and <laughs> calling people nasty names. So, you know, we are to protect and keep what is godly, godly. You give to Caesar that which is Caesar's, but you give to God that which is God. And he does not like people making money off of, you know, in the church. It's different from tithing. I have something to say about that too. But you don't fleece the flock. You know, if you want to sell, you're, they were selling sacrificial animals for temple for the sacrifice and they were doing it inside the temple walls as a big no-no. He's like, take it out, take it out, take it out. And there's also other things that were occurring and uh, he got ticked off. Um, he came to fulfill scripture. He didn't come to do away with the scripture or the law that happened in the Old Testament. So God wiped out very evil people. They were sacrificing babies. You know, so when I hear the stuff about, you know, God, killing people. How can you serve a God that kills people? It's like, you do know who these people were that he decimated. They were doing evil. They were taking live children, putting them, these evil people, putting them on an altar, sacrificing them to Baal and Baal gods. I don't know what that is exactly, but it wasn't good. Mm -mm, you don't do that. That's murder, <laughs> and God does not approve of that, okay? There's a difference between murdering people who are doing criminal acts. I don't necessarily agree with it. I'm just telling you what it says. He's protecting the innocent. They may have the sin nature born into the world, but they're innocent. You understand? He avenged their deaths. Well, if somebody came along and took your baby and did something unmentionable, how would you feel? You'd say, oh, that's fine. God says not to murder, so we're good. I mean, no. Or your neighbor's child. I'd hope you loved your neighbor enough that you would protect their child too and not just turn away. You know, this world is going nutso because I, I blame the pastors, I blame the Christians. Where are you? What are you doing? This is what real Christianity looks like. Standing up for the truth, not, oh, pray it and leave it. Who said that? Where is that in the Bible? No, you pray, you wait for an answer from God, 
or what you do. And I'm not saying there's some like burning bush moment and he's talking to you, but if you have wisdom, you know what? And you just read in the Bible or you know the law even, and you have good counsel around you, it's a no brainer of evil. If somebody is suppressing you, that's a no brainer. We were being suppressed. I was being suppressed. You rise up and you say something, because if I don't, then the next person is going to have a problem with this. If I rise up and the people who are supposed to help me don't help me, then they're all the more accountable too. Okay, then you go on my poop list, you know, and we're just going to keep going higher and higher and higher until we get complete satisfaction and resolution that appeals and appeases us. And we get to decide what that is, right? So, Edmund Burke. Evil prospers because good men do nothing. There's different variations of it, but that's the gist, right? So, why do I want to pass my problems on to the next generation or the next person? I don't think you understand what's going on, or maybe you do. If I don't stand and fight this fight, I'm doing it on behalf of everybody. What's being done to me is going to be done to you. It's like a socialistic, communistic movement. Your words are not good enough for you, young lady. We get to surveil you, steal your copyright, steal your words. You're an amazing speaker, you're an amazing dancer, choreographer, all of these things. But we're going to dissect each element and put it on our own people because we'll make more money. Oh, no, a redheaded dancer, oh, we can find another one like that. You ain't going to find another one like me. I'm all of this in one. You ain't gonna find somebody else that knows how to choreograph like me because they didn't go through the pains that I've gone through. And now we can include the pains that you corporations put on top of me, okay? All of this, you don't have another human being in the world like, like me. There's not another human being in the world like you either. But, you know, come on, this is extreme stuff. And it makes me able to do all of these things, right? We draw upon our experiences. I can tell somebody who has very little experience, and I can tell somebody who's a prop up, who a corporation said, here, steal this from, from me. Let's put it on this other person. It's like, you have no idea what you're doing. You don't know what you're speaking from. The heart's not there. And I'm not talking about being a good actor and emoting, because I'm a good actor and I can tell a bad actor. And I can also tell a good actor, and I can also tell if it's authentic or acting. Keep your heart soft. <laughs> do you see why I'm saying it's really hard for me to do this? Because of everything that I've gone through. So, you know, just piling another one on there. And then let's look at the whole thing with what Jesus said. Let's get back to this point. It's a very good point. How can you follow a God that allows all of this destruction and this and that? It's like, why are we blaming everything that is evil and destructive on the Lord? He has an opponent too, an evil, nasty, who was the most beautiful angel in the world. You can't see gravity, but you know it's there, and we feel its effects. You can't see God, but we definitely feel its effects. That's mine. It's It's been my copyright for a very long time. Um, it's also on my social media, and on my pictures and everything. So, guys, Holy Spirit, God, all of this stuff. Why are you blaming everything that's evil on God? That is the first thing I hear from people who doubt the Lord. And I was there. I wasn't born a superhuman Christian, like, oh yeah, God, Jesus, love you, he loves me. Come on now. I lived an adult life without the Lord in it, even though I had Catholicism and that form of Christianity in my life, even though I had the Jewish faith and everything in my life. I'm talking about like the dawning, the clicking in the brain and the heart. You know, you got this little thing, synaptic thing going on, and then your soul clicks in and you're like, oh wow, what about the relationship, right? His adversary is out there 24-7 trying to destroy the brethren. Blame him for all of this murder and carnage and evil. And then hold those human beings who actually do those actions accountable for it. 
I mean, if we're living in this world and there's all of this evil coming at us, we're going to be affected. Hopefully we will choose, oh, this is evil that I'm seeing or hearing on the news. We choose. Do we want it to go in here or are we going to do something about it? I chose to do something about it. There's too many babies being thrown away in trash dumpsters by mothers who have a moment of psychosis and fear and all these other things. I'm not saying it lightly. We have Emmy nominations for that project. We did a lot of hard research and work and we interviewed these people who've done this and you ask, why did you do it? Well, what is it? I understand coming to a decision, oh my God, I can't handle this. I can't handle being a mother, I, you know, and the fear of it all, being afraid of your husband, being afraid of the boyfriend, and I get it. I would know my answer. I wanted to know other people's answers. We're being influenced by evil all the time. We have a choice. Choose to do evil, choose to do good. Evil, it doesn't matter what side of the brain it is. You know, the, the, the cartoon and old thing, it's very cliche, the devil and the angel on your shoulder. But it's an easy way to look at it, isn't it? and it makes sense. I think we kind of need to look at that silly cliche again. It's choice. And you can see, you wrestle with it, and the wrestling is good, that means you're alive, that means you haven't made the ultimate decision yet for your soul, maybe, you know? Even when we do, we have to keep choosing to walk in that repentance by always choosing good. We're gonna fail, because we're human, but we need to try. God sees it. He sees it. He knows your heart. The second I or you think of something wicked in our heads, oops, that doesn't go unknown to him. Satan doesn't know it. That's one thing we have on our side. Guys, choose right. But that, that is how. That is how I can serve this God. Because I see what is his and what is not. You know, Anything that is ugly, and I, there's a pastor, and I, I'm very upset with you. These were my words, and how you got them, we're going to do a little discovery phase on that, because this was mine, and I'm saying it. Nobody, go ahead, try to say that I took it from you. Uh-uh, we have evidence. You know, apples are for eating, let's just put it that way. Okay, so, you have Satan's character traits list them everything that is evil in the world and then you have god character traits list them it's everything good and beautiful and strong in this world match up what you're doing find it in that list you've got things like murder lies and everything in between and i don't know what the hierarchy is but let's just say that's an example saving a life. A life is worth saving until this final breath. Hours. Yeah, I know people have been stealing it. I know there's been other variations of it, but people actually have been using it as dialogue in their film. I'm like, excuse the blank out of me. Okay, and then you have it down here that could be just smiling at somebody, telling the truth. You have lies, truth, murder, saving a life, and everything in between. Where is your deed on these lists? Satan, evil, God, good. Stop blaming God for the things of the devil. You can easily tell what is which. Make that list. Go through the Bible. Use the law books. The law books are based on what is in scripture. Come on now. Love the law. Don't be legalistic, obviously. Again, Jesus came to fulfill the law but not do away with it. And there is mercy and forgiveness, but there's also restitution, right? repentance, and restoration as well. There's a whole bunch of things in between with it that's good. So anyway, I did a video where I said, why isn't anybody teaching this? It's so obvious. It is so obvious. And then all of a sudden my video gets deleted off of my account and then it's put on another human being saying it as if they came up with it. Same gestures that I did, same intonations that I did. I wasn't modeling it for this human being. 
you know, God gave it to me and your deeds are going to be found out because we're going to reveal them. Simple as that. And it's so funny that the same institution uh, was also uh, had some things done from a corporation that's harassing us. It's like, oh my gosh, the connected thoughts, we're figuring it out. Connect, connect, connect. Why is this being done? I don't work for free. I do not do anything without a contract and I have to be cited at source and proper credit and I choose how my name's appearing. My board also has to sign off on it and I'm not going to tell you which board members because then, you know, we've already had a forgery of my signature and my husband's on certain documents transferred and I'm like, I didn't sign this. <laughs> Get the heck out of here. And what's even funnier is that document had excerpts of our private conversations worked into the document. And I'm like, this is crazy. Nobody would have signed that document. We definitely didn't. Anyway, but you know, so stuff like that, that falls in the Satan category, the evil category. So compare your deeds. Hmm, I'm gonna obstruct this person. That's something of Satan. Gee, I'm going to help lift up this person. That's something of God, you know. Now, let's talk about love your enemies. What does that actually mean? Because I was like, wait a minute. I don't think God means to love your enemies to the point where you sacrifice and lose things. I don't think it means that you lay your life down for your enemies. You lay your life down for your friends. That's what the scripture says. I don't think that you let the enemy into your camp and then you give them everything and you help them and they destroy you. Wake up, Christians. Read the Old Testament. Proverbs is a great place to start and so is Ecclesiastes. Okay, there's a scripture as if your neighbor needs clothing, give them your, your shirt. But, check it with Proverbs. Jesus was always quoting from the Old Testament. He was Jewish. Come on. If you give everybody everything you have, then you have nothing. Then what? There are exceptions. God may move it upon your heart to give to your enemy or to somebody who did something wrong but then that's going to change that person's heart and you're going to see it there must be a reason if that person's heart does not change then you did not do something of god satan tricked you be careful get good counsel okay otherwise you are doing something wrong and you're going to hurt your family and your friends and people around you and probably yourself too i was instructed once my so-called enemy. But I'm like, you're not my enemy and I'm not yours. People are coercing you and I can see it. I have the evidence here and I can see it very clearly from stepping back. I'm trying to help you. It cost me, but it never cost me to the point where I jeopardized anything that I wasn't willing to lose. Does that make sense? And I didn't. God was guiding me. So I have an example of actually giving to my enemy, but you know what, that really wasn't my enemy, it was the person puppeting that person who was my enemy. You see how that works? Although that person can be held and was held for their actions, you know, because they should have looked in the Satan list saying, um, not allowing Miss Noel Rose Anderson to do this and lie about her character, that's the Satan column. That's not in the God column. So if you question things like, oh my God, how can you let this happen to me? Don't, my friends, don't listen to a lot of this BS contemporary Christian pastoral stuff. Not all of them are off their rocker, but too many are. Don't you understand they're corporately bought and most of them are corporately placed in there or they're corporately assuaged, persuaded to change and not do the right thing because they'll lose something. You understand how it works? And they want to say the character traits of God or Satan of God and it's God's fault. 
no. Either you made a dumb mistake, or it was Satan. If you don't have an out that leads to godliness, there's a problem there. Use your litmus test. That's what the checklists are. That will help you. And it's a no-brainer, really, once you get it. But today's pastors, too many of them are corporate. And I'm like, why are you making everybody think that because God promise us, promises us to be, and I never see this in the Bible, to be rich, to be healthy, wealthy, and where is that? To be blessed. It has different forms, too. Now, do something that I had to do. I had to go back, way back in my history, and make a timeline because our legal counsel, board, all of these people are like, do me a favor, Noel Rose. Make a timeline of the earliest thing you can remember where you started seeing BS happening in your life that really shouldn't have. Because most of the time, if you do good things, good comes out of it. If you do good things and evil keeps coming out of it and you keep getting harmed, you don't run away from it and decide, oh, you know what, maybe that's just not for me. You find out what the heck's going on. So, another thing, I went back into my history and I found something very surprising. It wasn't, ah, that's life, you know what they say, that song, we've been listening to Sinatra up and down every courtyard and corridor lately. Um, no, it wasn't life, it was intrusion. And I'm like, God, how can you do all these evil things to me? Nope. Satan. So who falls into that Satan category? A lot of the corporations. They're not doing good. There are some amazing corporations that are very godly. And there are some that are just good people and have nothing to do with God. You know, either way it works. Um, so I'm not going to name names either. But uh, be aware of people. They've had their eye on me for a long time because it's like, wait, this was unexplained. How did this happen? Why were these people in my life? Why did they do so many horrible things in my life? This and this and this. And I just kept going down the list. And I'm like, we've discovered that certain people were placed there. Some knew and some didn't. I'll tell you the, the whole thing about didn't know. They were just coerced in a very gentle, strange way to just have our paths cross. And we did some research of how that can be done so the people who were being used on both ends wouldn't know. I'm like, that's really interesting. Um, you know, I got pissed off too, because I was my whole life a joke. All these people were just placed in my life so you guys could get good story ideas and dialogue? You know, you have to think about that. So we went through everything and we dug up documents, photos, old witness testimonies, you know, calling people and doing all of this stuff. And you discover, it's called discovery phase. I should have been an attorney. I could be. I just don't like it. I mean, I enjoy the law and finding out about all this stuff to protect myself, but I don't think I could do it for other people. Very noble. My husband's doing that for other people. <laughs> it's just a lot of work, but I know how to protect myself. I can represent myself, too. I've gotten that good. Um, so I was like, hmm, that's interesting. And then you see a little breadcrumb trail, and you start comparing things, and you start tearing it apart. You want to find the flaw in the argument, the flaw in the argument. And then you find there is no flaw. This is what it is. And so you then keep building upon all of that. And then all of a sudden you find out what the truth is and you're like, Ugh. well, it explains everything. You know, because I have gotten, I was allowed to get a certain place in my career, everything I chose, but I couldn't, you know, break through. And there's that saying about the, the glass ceiling. So I thought about the Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, the film, or the book, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, whatever, and the walk of Vader breaking through that glass ceiling, in a sense, with the force and thrust breaking through gravity and being able to... 
who puts that there in the first place? Well, let's look at it this way. Is it kismet? Is it God? Is it Satan? Is it the corporations who don't want certain people to get someplace because I'm their best kept secret and resource? You know, there's a lot of things I was considering. Hold on, guys. Oh, about four more minutes. Um, so there were a lot of things I was considering. What is going on? How to keep your heart supple and soft through all of this, too. I don't know if I can do this, Lord. This is pretty intense. And then I, I did more research and with our friends in various places. I was like, oh my gosh, this is just what people in military and undercover, op, co, undercover, op, uh, what's that term? I wrote it down. I'm, you know, researching all of this. And I'm like, the same thing that we're going through, but we never signed up for it. Dang it. <laughs> we never signed up for this. And I was like, wow, is my stuff really that good? And all these people around me are trying to gaslight me into thinking, Noel, you're really not that good of a dancer, but wait, that person's trying to emulate me. And then I have this person over here that wants me to actually create me on them. And then I have these people over here that said, you know what, you're injured now, you'll make a better teacher. Uh, brainiacs, how, I can't dance that well right now. How am I gonna teach? Not gonna happen. <laughs> Plus, because you want me to teach, and you, you do the little hint drops on our social media, uh, Rue Run Rouge is a school. No. We do teach classes when I feel like it, when my other people, dancers and colleagues, feel like it. We're not school. Not yet. I might do it at some point, but I'm not going to do it because you want me to do it, because that's your socialistic, communistic way of uh, categorizing me. Oh, now she has to do this. She can make us a lot of money by raising up all these little dancers to be like her, and she's amazing, so we'll make all this money. She'll have 10 students, and wow, that's 10 different students we can make money. No, okay, I'm not doing that for you because I don't want to do it, okay? Especially now, in spite of you, I'm not going to do it. I'm a dancer still. I'm not done. And I get to decide when I am done, and I'm not done. <laughs> Come on, face to face, let's go. I'm ready. I am not afraid of you. I know you're afraid of me. You guys are trying to drop hints, oh, we have to be so polite. I wouldn't call what I just did polite. It was truthful in your face. That's something I do appreciate about our president and everyone's trying to tell him. Half the country's telling him, oh, don't be that way. Why? Do you know what? He's trying to tell all these people that are opposing him, too bad. You know, too bad, really. I'd rather have him clean up the mess afterwards from being not polite than letting us go into World War III. Oh, you do know that World War III is not going to be fought with sticks and stones, right? That was a diversion, a distraction. Pay attention to sticks and stones. This thing was conjured up by corporations. World War III is a corporate war fighting for digital uh, information, data, copyright, all of this stuff. That's what, what World War III is, and we're in the midst of it right now, people. Don't be fooled. You know, because we we wouldn't let World War Three really happen, because we are aware of the repercussions. So how do you have that happen? Look in your history books. Who started all these wars? Who were funding them? How were they funded? Very interesting stuff. They don't teach this in school. <laughs> My dad's very well read in history. Um, you know, what was I saying? I got off track. Uh, corporations and what they're doing to me oh school I don't want to dance I don't I mean I do want to dance I'm not ready to be a teacher all of these things okay how do you keep your heart soft when you know people are trying to make you into something that you don't want to be didn't this happen in Russia the USSR they don't even do this anymore do they I don't think so it doesn't work you know you make it look like it's a choice. Let's give her a hint drop on her social media to recategorize her dance company to be a school. And it's a suggestion.